can come of life. That comes with Paul tells Timothy, study. Yes. Show yourself approval. Yes. Yes. Sometimes some folk one time pick Bible up when they come in the church. Amen. Amen. They, they, they just do use it from Sunday to Sunday. Yeah. Monday is State Park, Tuesday is State Park. Mm -hmm. But you gotta open it. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 You gotta open it. And not just read it, but you gotta make applicable what's in the scripture. You gotta apply it to your life. If it's gonna change your heart, if it's gonna give you stability in life, you gotta first read it and make application. Amen. Amen. Men that wanna be leaders have to do that. Sisters that are supporting leaders have to do that. Men, if you just want to be a teacher of God's word, you, you can't wait for Sunday morning to talk about teaching. You gotta, you gotta be doing that all week. When I'm in a general secret, perception, and, 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 and when we talk about that perception, perception in the season. And then and the, the other thing that comes when you look at duty, when you look at Elijah's uh, duty, uh, Duty comes in segments. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You, you can't do, you cannot do everything God tells us to do in his word today. Amen. Amen. I don't care how good you are, what your intent is, you can't accomplish everything that God wants you to accomplish in one day. But you can accomplish it in seconds. And Peter, Peter says, grow. Then he tells us, add. Yeah. Amen. He says, add to your faith. Virtue. Sad part about it. Some of us want to add knowledge. And skip over virtue. No, it's like a recipe. If you're going to be satisfying the book, the book says add virtue. It first things first. And I know some of them say, well, I can do it all today. I'll add virtue and patience and knowledge and temperance. I get it all today. You're going to mess up. You're going to become disgruntled. You're going to become frustrated with the process. And you're going to miss the perception. The season, and not only the season, you're going to miss the perception, the season, and you're going to miss segments. Do you think you conquered virgin? Then move. Stop with temperance. You know what temperance is? I, I may not ever get off the temperance to Jesus. Temperance is self control. Mercy, mercy. You, you, you're not going to do nothing about God. You don't have no self control. Amen. And to get to that level, look at, look at what this lady, look at what the widow went through. Look Elijah went through because they had to understand that there is some segments in them. And when you understand segments, you add so your faith would grow. And one of those things is self control. Don't go in the church 30 years still cussing out people. That's just me. That's just me. The Lord knows that. You got to understand that duty, when you're doing God's will, it's done in segments. And when it's done segments, God will always put a situation where you have to use that practically. Yeah. For instance, self-control. I just use that. And here you are, that's Lord, that's Lord. give me more self-control. Do you really mean that? So as soon as we get out of service, you walk outside. Those Jumbo out there. With shorts down here. He 
welcome them to you. Get me your space. Stuff flying out of his mouth all over your face. Self-control. When we talk about your self-control, I got you to run this gun. I didn't mean not to have that answer. But, but you ask for that. And sometimes God will send it over and over and over again. And after a while, you will start getting it right. But it don't happen overnight. Or maybe something. You ever say, had something small happen to you, like insignificant? You say, and then there are priorities. When you're doing the will of God, there are priorities. Amen. Amen. You ever heard the thing, first things first? Jesus even let you know there are priorities. Listen to this. Listen to the scripture. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. What does Jesus say? Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom oh, of oh, God. Wait, 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 wait. He said, but seek ye first. He didn't just say, just, well, seek this. He said, see, this is, in other words, there has to be some priorities. Amen. In, in your personal life, there has to be some. What's what's important? What's important? What's important? Anybody in here have? You don't reach it. Do you not prioritize your life? I mean, you gotta have priorities. Amen. Don't you have them in your personal life? Well, I know we live in a different society now, most of them. Here's a priority. When you finish college, you want a job. Amen. Then you want to have somewhere to live. You don't want to go get a car. Put $2,000 worth of tires and rims in. And don't have no work that you hate. That's facts. You might drive down the road during the day in that car with two thousand dollars worth of rims and tires on it, and the dog shaking his head in the back. But we as Christians do we? There ought to be some priorities of duties. And when I say priorities, you know what priority does. Priority puts responsibility ahead of situations. If your priorities do not rise to the level of pushing, of pushing yeah. responsibility hmm. ahead of situations, then you can now I know that because in Matthew 6, Jesus said, see ye first, first the kingdom of God. Wait a minute. Well, if it's not priority, why would he say see it first? If, if, if it's not important, why would he say, now I want you to watch, I'm going to let him read the rest of it. See, he said, first things first, see ye when what you want me to seek first, Jesus? The kingdom of God and, and his righteousness. And what's going to happen? And all these things shall be. Oh, so, so there are priorities. Yeah, yeah. There are priorities. I mean, if you get out of college and get a job, eventually, and get you a home, somewhere to stay, eventually, you can get a car. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just angry. Stop. I'm not going to do this. But Jesus said, if you do that, 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 this is the most important, this is the will of God 
seeking the kingdom first. Let me, let me just throw this out. This is free. Do you not know that you cannot even contend to be religious without seeking the kingdom? Amen. You can feel good emotionally all over about your religion, but if you don't seek the kingdom first, it don't mean nothing. So Jesus said, there are some priorities. And he said, take the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. Then, all these things. What things, Jesus? Salvation. Life, yeah. necessities, yeah. all of these. We're going at it backwards. I mean, he gives us a simple plan. We got duties, and many times we miss that. I, I contend this morning that many of the struggles we go through by now, we cause on ourselves. Anyone want to be saved. Seriously. I mean, if you, if you want to be saved. We do Sunday next year. And I understand that too. I understand it too. I'm not trying to break. But, but, but if you want to be saved. Let me lay this out for you. I, I'm gonna get away from Elijah. From maybe we're getting on something. This priority. Maybe we'll do some more of this. Maybe. But but but, but if you want to be saved, let me lay something out for you. In Matthew chapter sixteen. Matthew chapter sixteen. Now I have to quote all this, but I think it's easier when we can talk about it and about its work. Sixteen thirteen. You got a Bible or Amen. Amen. When Matthew Jesus, sixteen thirteen. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Look, look, look hear me. I'm saying. And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples. He saying, asked his disciples, saying, "Who do men say, say that I? Am? Who do men say that I, I, the Son of Man, am?" He said that I, the Son of Man, am. And they, they say, said, "Some say thou art John the Baptist." Let's stop for a minute. Was he John the Baptist? Was he John the Baptist? Read. Some Elias. Some say he's Elias. Was he? And others, Jeremiah. Others, Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. That when they say one of the prophets, I don't know, and I don't care. That's why folk call it that. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know, they don't care. Same attitude. Unfortunately. They don't know who Jesus is, and they don't. Now, watch, watch. I'm, 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 he said, but he said unto them, but who say he that I am? Who say he that I am? And Simon Peter answered, and Simon Peter answered, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. God. And Jesus, and Jesus answered and said unto him, him Let's not die Simon, 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 Simon for flesh, flesh and blood, blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Which is in heaven. Now I know this is old teaching, because most of my brethren they say, Oh, you ain't gonna keep teaching on that. Everybody know that. Not everybody know that. Well, everybody knew it. They wouldn't go, but they'd be done over it. Now, but let me see. He said, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build, build my church. Let me talk about this so much. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Now, isn't that red writing in your Bible? Yes, that denotes yes, Jesus speaking. Yes, he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail He didn't say the gates of hell might not. Did he say might not or shall not? Shall not. 
Surely that's going to come to pass. Might not mean well, it is a 50 50 chance. So they will have it. And notice in verse number 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what's he told Peter, he said, I'm going to give you the keys. We all see that? The keys are relevant today for you being saved. There are a lot of people who claim that they are preaching with the keys. They are not. They are fumbling with the keys. You better the grocery store and come out and bring it. Jesus said in John 8 32, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And I know. They say, well, what is the truth? I'm so glad you asked me what it is. Truth is the word of God. This is John 17, 17. says, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Yeah. You see, I feel like I'm saved. No, you got to know. Amen. How can you do God's will just like Elijah? How can you do God's will if you don't know? I said, you got to know the truth. Jesus promised to build the church in the 16th chapter of Matthew. And you know what? He built the church. We know that because in the 28th verse of that same chapter, Jeremy said, Verily I say unto you, said, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here. There's some of y'all standing here. We shall not taste their death. We shall not die till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I know the church is here because if it's not, some of them men still around here. And ain't none of them around here. They'd be, they be 3,000 years old. He said, some of y'all standing right here are not going to die till you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Who's in the blood? And I say, One thing, when you, when your preacher, you give me the challenge. Make him show it to you in the book. Go to Colossians. That's right. Colossians and I'm through. Amen. I'm going to get you too sweet. Colossians chapter 1. Amen. You there? Oh, this is some good teaching. Amen. Uh, start in verse 9. What Paul writing to the Colossians? For this cause. Also, for this cause. Also. Also. Since the day we heard. The day we heard. Do not see. Do not pray for you. Pray for you. And to desire. That, that you might, might be filled with the knowledge, with the of, knowledge of his will. Of his will. His will. His will. In all in wisdom, all wisdom and, spiritual and spiritual understanding. Oh, that's what's missing. Spiritual understanding. Read. Why, that Paul? you might walk worthy of the Lord. This is why. That you might walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all people. All pleasing. Being free in every good work. Being, being fruitful. In every good work. Let's stop. We got time? Yeah. 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 Amen. Oh, time. <laughs> There's a lot of folk. And I want to expect something from you. Amen. I ain't got nothing to give you. Amen. Somebody say, being fruitful in every good work when you get ready to work. In every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. And you can't be, if you're satisfied with your service now, you are already lost. You ought to be grown. I didn't put this in you. Watch. Number 11 says, Strengthen with all might. According to the glory of the power of all patience. Patience. And long suffering. Long suffering. Joyfulness. I know I'm going to. I'm from the start. Write this down. Put it in there. Long suffering. With joyfulness. Right? right? He said, Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to the partakers of the, of the inheritance of the saints. Like Here is where I was going. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Who has delivered us from the power, from the power of darkness. And has translated, and has translated us. us into the kingdom of his descent. If the kingdom is not here, how can I be translated into it? Now let me tell you how you can get it. You ready? This is it. You ready? 
Let me tell you how you get into it. You know what I think we need to do? Don't let me just let me, let me teach. Let's go to Romans. Because you have to give you my opinion. It is my opinion. Book is where the best way to do it. Amen. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 6. Let's see what Paul says. Amen. You there? Amen. We're waiting on you. We take your time. Take your time. We, we all right. Amen. They never got no line for robbers on the <laughs> Romans 6, what Paul say? What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now he said, just because we have grace, uh -huh. we cannot keep sinning. Amen. Amen. You, 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 just because God has blessed us with grace, you can't keep doing your own thing. At some point, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, I need to shift. I need to straighten it. I got to stop being, being lying to myself. That's all you're lying to. You're deceiving yourself. So Paul said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may have God forbid. He said, God forbid. How shall we? How shall now he's here to church? How shall we that are dead to sin? That are dead to sin. Live any longer dead. Gibson. That's us. He said, We're dead to sin. Why can we keep going back and doing the same old foolish thing? Why can you keep doing that? Tell you earlier this morning, Jesus did that so you can keep making this. Now we don't make it, yeah. but not deliberately. Right. I'm not perfect. You, some of y'all won't see me make mistakes. And read my simple point like that. No, you're not. There's so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into His death. Therefore, oh, we 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 gonna be gonna. If you haven't been baptized, now I know there are a lot of people say that. Some say I got baptized when I was 25. You wouldn't talk right, you couldn't be baptized. See, you got to be taught right to be baptized. Somebody asked you, why were you baptized? They said, do I feel it? <laughs> for the remission of sin. Baptism puts you in Christ. If you want to be saved, you got to be in Christ. Now watch, watch. 2 Timothy 2.10, Paul says, Therefore I endure all things, but he ain't saved that they might obtain the salvation which is in Christ. And Paul says right here, in Romans 6, and I'm good. He says, know you not that so many of us that were baptized into Christ was baptized into his death. He says, and therefore we are buried with him by baptism. Listen, we've got We got to understand the empty barrel. The empty barrel syndrome is that God doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have to wait on you. But what he wants you to do is learn to trust him. Learn to get out of yourself. Start putting your confidence in the Lord. Start trusting him. Be like Isaiah, Lord, here I am. Send me. Stop, stop walking in darkness. Wake up. It's time to wait. You know what? Paul said our salvation is nearer today than it was yesterday. That means that each day God allows you to wake up, you're close to the death today than you were yesterday. That's why it behooves us to make our peace call in the lunch and church. That's why you know, we have to make up in our mind, in our mind, that we're going to be better, we're going, that we're going to let the Lord see what the blessings are that we're receiving and that we're trying to live the best that we can. 
Don't mean that we're going to fall. But it means when we fall, we're going to get back up. Rededicate our lives. You're here this morning, you're not a member of the church. I told you about the church now. I told you about the church. Then you need to come forth. You need to come. Give me your hand. Give God your heart. You're here this morning, and you're in the church, but you don't understand. You've been in direction of duty. You haven't done anything that God said. You don't understand what the will of the Lord is. You need to come and rededicate your life. But if you're not in the church, you need to come. You know what? I know I know the devil is busy. You need to take him. You ain't got to walk up there in front of all them people and be embarrassed. That's what the, he don't want to. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are open the righteous. And his ears are open. Why don't you come? We don't stand, stand.